Okay, I think we we are ready to uh, start again. So we will definitely have people coming in again, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, since for the sake of time, since we do have a tight schedule, we will uh, try to, to, to kick it off now. Uh, we will uh, start our discussion. We have uh, the uh, honor to have the three ambassadors here with, with us today. It is a great honor for us, for the association, uh, to uh, repeat for the second time this uh, discussion. We uh, were here last year uh, in Athens again, discussing around the same time for you know the possible involvement of uh, uh, some companies from the energy sector, of course, from your uh, uh, respective countries uh, coming into to Greece and uh, looking at uh, an asset that was uh, under discussion at the time for privatization, that was DESFA, or uh, uh, National TSO, Transmission System Operator for, for Gas. Uh, we are here a year later. Uh, the transaction eventually was successful. Uh, we do have now the actual presence of uh, the consortium of this uh, three companies that uh, are coming from the three respective countries being uh, really present on board on, uh, on, on DESFA and uh, in Greece, which is also a very good sign as a, you know, a vote of confidence, if you wish, for, for the Greek economy, uh, to say the least, uh, not only for respectively for, for the energy sector. So uh, with this uh, very brief introduction, I will uh, give the floor first to His Excellency, the Ambassador of uh, Italy here in Greece, uh, for his uh, remarks. Mr. Maras, if you want. Yes. So here, yes, yeah. what? I go to the podium. Okay. Axiotime <laughs> Kiri. Let me congratulate first with the organizers, with Costa, for the wide scope of this meeting and at the same time for the well-focused topics which have been chosen. It is not by chance that international energy issues are so seriously discussed nowadays in our region and in Greece. And this is a very positive sign. I guess that the Belgian, the Spanish ambassadors and myself have been asked to be in this first panel because the consortium, which is now a main shareholder in DESFA, is made out of companies of our countries. DESFA is indeed a very good example to look at in order to envision the energy future for our region. Others, better equipped than me, will explain this foreign investment in DESFA and the potential of the company. What is interesting for me to say is why the embassy, that is my government, has been so supportive of the investment in Greece by SNAM. Three reasons. We wanted to support Greece in this privatization process for her well and long-deserved recovery. We wanted to support a brilliant Italian economy, but most of all, we have been supportive for a wider political energy reason, and I would like to spend here some words about. Let me list some facts or some reasons. Italy. In Italy, we need, as everybody, but maybe more than others, security of supplies. We need to be economically competitive as a country, and all our behavior must be sustainable. That means, among other things, environmentally friendly. This is our trilemma, if one might say so. A trilemma we are more sensitive to than many other countries, since we are a manufacturing and an export-led country with little or non-domestic resources. Let us add that in broader terms that, our, that for our overall security and stability, we believe in a European and regional integration, in social and political cohesion, in our area, if not in the whole world, to which we could at least provide 
an encouraging example of how things should be run if we run them properly at home. The energy factor, mainly because of electricity, has become more than ever fundamental for the stability of our society. As an Italian, when I say this, my mind goes spontaneously to Africa also, where a better energy distribution will probably loosen the human tragedies and demographic pressures we are experiencing nowadays. Now, the energy imbalances we are experiencing are definitely not a good recipe to build this ideal framework. This is why we are trying to provide remedies to these imbalances. This is why we are investing in the energy sector in Greece and in the region. We are not interested in buying an asset and make money out of it. We need and are interested in our energy security and in the economic integration in southern Europe and in the Mediterranean. By doing so, we are very coherent with the five dimensions of the European Energy Union we all know almost by heart. Probably we are more coherent than others because these dimensions are very relevant to us. First, energy security and solidarity. Indeed, more could be done. Second, a fully integrated energy market. Again, here too, more could be done. The price of our gas is still very depending from the Northern European market and far above the European average because of the Northern routes and the cost of transits. We should safeguard the Ukrainian route and look very carefully at what will happen to Nord Stream 2. The EU directive will not be an obstacle to its realization, which, if it will occur, will bring a further imbalance in the European energy infrastructure. Nor we know what will the US do to this regard if they will implement sanctions. We should build our own routes, bring efficiency to our system, harmonize our regulations. Third, energy efficiency to help keep demand under control, and four, decarbonization. Five, research, innovation, and competitiveness. This approach, this policy, is at the gist of the Italian support to DESFA and to other initiatives in the area. It is an approach we are trying, as Greece and other countries, to bring in our new national plan, as we did already in the last one. This plan is currently under discussion in order to be implemented, hopefully, this year. We definitely have the know-how for this. We have our universities, our engineers, our entrepreneurs, our companies, provided we invest in them and allow them to operate. We need to be consistent and coherent on a long-term perspective. Some final considerations about gas, which are at the core of our effort in this regard. Gas is secure with no problems of volatility or storage. Gas has low emissions. Emissions could even be zero with renewable gas. LNG increasingly relevant for land and sea transportation. And also we are registering improvements in carbon capture and storage. For these reasons, we consider our national interest to care about gas as a long-term transitional energy asset toward renewables. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, now we'll give the floor to Mr. Enrique Vigeria Rubio, the Ambassador of Spain to Greece. <coughs> if we have a presentation as well, we can uh, put on the screen. Thank you, Costas, for this opportunity you gave us to uh, reach um, the uh, Greek academics uh, on our uh, 
main uh, objectives. I, I, I would um, try to be very brief, and I'm uh, mainly uh, focusing on uh, uh, press uh, information. I'm not, uh, of course, uh, speaking on behalf of uh, Spanish companies. They have their own targets. Uh, I, uh, I'm currently talking to all of them at different levels, and I know more or less how things are. I try to concentrate on latest performances here in the um, um, a Greek market of these uh, three selected Spanish energy companies. On the first sector, um, gas distribution. I don't know if uh, we could... Uh, pass to the first slide. Yeah, um, as uh, uh, Ambassador Mara said, uh, the contracts were signed and uh, the partial uh, um, privatization of this first is uh, already a reality. So uh, the consortium is fully operated. Uh, I understand that uh, the money has been fully disbursed and uh, there are commitments, important commitments to uh, renovate, uh, renew, um, uh, modernized uh, the uh, gas distribution network. So I hope by, by, by 2023 20, um, everything will be fulfilled. And uh, uh, Greece uh, will uh, fully uh, benefit from the vast experience of these three companies. I think the three companies that have a, a, a deeper experience on uh, uh, gas distribution uh, network regulations. So um, the, uh, the Greek uh, uh, regulation evol uh, evolution will be closely monitored, I suppose, and uh, I, I trust that uh, the revenues and long-term expectations of uh, investors, uh, of the three investors, uh, will be fully uh, fulfilled, as well as also the uh, um, uh, aims of uh, the Greek government. So uh, in, in any case, very close cooperation and confidence are needed. Um, Enagas is also, uh, and I'll pass to the next uh, slide, uh, as you know, is also not only, um, uh, oh, thank you very much. What is uh, the, the point? Next one. Oh, okay, okay, like that. Um, is also a shareholder of ta TAP, and in this sense, uh, I think uh, we may be also uh, uh, very happy and satisfied of the completion of the gas pipe work in Greece. Um, we are very thankful uh, for the Greek uh, authorities at all levels for being able to solve uh, the pending environmental uh, problems, particularly in some places, in Kavala and the last resort, and everything has been uh, arranged on time. So we are being satisfied, very satisfied here. Um, Enagas um, has just made uh, more than 100 um, million uh, euros uh, a benefit in the first quarter in 2019. And uh, I understand uh, that the, comp the company is uh, very much uh, mm, keen to find investment opportunities abroad because in Spain, in the national market, uh, its activities are very much regulated. And I think that uh, with a, a recent change in Spain, uh, a political change in Spain in the last elections, uh, it will remain so. So there will be no further big opportunities for the company to be investing in Spain, uh, and that uh, will force the company to invest elsewhere. We have uh, read about a, a very, very important investment in, uh, in uh, the United States. They have acquired uh, with some other companies uh, a, a, a big share of Talgras Energy. Um, and for this reason, I may also expect that uh, if things uh, go well in Greece, uh, Enagas may also be tempted in, to increase its operations uh, here. Uh, I have to also speak about uh, gas and oil exploration, since uh, you may have heard about the, the new lease agreement that uh, Spain company Repsol uh, have uh, signed uh, with Hellenic Petroleum and uh, the Greek uh, government last month um, to explore for oil and gas in two new offshore blocks in Western Greece. Um, this would be uh, west uh, from uh, Corfu and uh, Kefalonia. Uh, I think that um, this shows uh, a courage by the Greek government uh, to, to grasp this uh, opportunity, uh, particularly in this moment where we are perhaps uh, peaking on the old drill era and um, 
in the middle of uh, the gas transition to, to try to look at the possibilities that uh, may, may, may exist still in Greece, uh, taking the reality that uh, uh, there may be some uh, gas uh, wells uh, unexploded uh, in the territory, as uh, it seems there be uh, also good prosperous uh, in, in, in the region. Uh, so uh, this uh, new lease agreement by Repsol is added to uh, two onshore uh, uh, exploration blocks in Ioannina Aito and Aito Loacarnania, uh, where Repsol has been operating for the last two years um, as an operating company uh, with Energian, which kept 40% uh, as a non-operating stake. Um, I have to stress here uh, a very important point for us, uh, which is the environmental conditions put in operation by Repsol. Uh, for these uh, uh, operations are extremely stringent, probably the, uh, the most stringent uh, in the world. It's also not only fulfilling the European standards and, and, and Greek uh, laws and regulations, but also it requires the uh, full discussion and approval by the Greek government. So, uh, but in any case, the confidence and the cooperation, once again, with local authorities uh, are essential. So I understand that uh, uh, the, pro the project is executed. Sometimes we hear uh, some complaints here and there, but um, we, we, we very, meant, uh, very much remain confident that things uh, will, will go on uh, as scheduled. Um, so Repsol, as you know, it's a Spanish uh, multinational company. It's present in uh, more than 40 countries. Uh, it uh, uh, made uh, 600 million euros uh, in uh, benefits uh, in the first quarter of 2019. So this is six times more uh, than Enagas, uh, and it employs 24,000 people. Um, they have uh, very, very important latest discoveries in Indonesia, Alaska, actually, in Alaska is uh, the Hoshi Hoseshu um, is the biggest uh, oil discovery in the U.S. soil for the last 40 years, and also in the Caribbean and Brazil. But let me just turn to renewals, the future, uh, where I have um, uh, selected Iberdrola as a Spanish company present in the Greek market since 2004 through uh, Rocas, uh, which is an Iberdrola uh, subsidiary. And um, the company has been focusing on uh, mature markets with uh, uh, stable regulation. And this is the case of uh, uh, Greece. And this is the reason why uh, Iberdrola, unlike some other uh, companies, uh, have remained in Greece and making money, making good business, I understand. Uh, even uh, the um, um, economic and financial crisis. So uh, nowadays, uh, Iberdrola has uh, 21 facilities uh, in Greece, uh, all in all with more than 260 megawatts. Uh, and uh, Greece is uh, with uh, the UK and Spain, the main European countries for uh, Iberdrola uh, investments. The last uh, two uh, investments it had uh, uh, lately, to put into operation a couple of uh, new uh, wind farms. One in Sara Katsaneka, uh, four megawatts uh, capacity. It will be, be implemented uh, next July. And uh, the other one is in uh, uh, Pirgari, uh, wind farm, uh, with an installed capacity of 16 uh, megawatts. So, uh, and I uh, will finish here. I Iberdrola, as you know, uh, it's a, a very important uh, electric uh, company, one of the most important in the world by market capitalization. Um, it, uh, it works in, in many, many markets and supply more than uh, one, 100 million people with uh, electricity. Has a workforce of 34,000 people and uh, had a revenue of uh, 3 billion euros uh, last year. Um, a staggering one billion in the first quarter of this year. So Abirola is, uh, is doing quite well, and uh, from that money, almost 30% uh, based on uh, renewable uh, energy. So uh, to finish up my, my presentation, I would say that uh, uh, in general, I see that uh, Greece has a great potential uh, in the three sectors uh, in general, and particularly also for Spain. 
uh, where we have uh, uh, important companies in all three uh, different subsectors, gas distribution, Enagas, oil and gas exploration production, uh, Repsol, and uh, of course, uh, renewable energy is wind and solar, uh, even but uh, there are other uh, operators, of course. Uh, so I trust that um, all the three companies uh, may be enlarging their uh, activities in Greece in the foreseeable future, uh, taking into account the great potential uh, all three sectors uh, may have in this country. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador Rubio. <clears throat> now I will uh, give the floor to uh, His Excellency Ambassador uh, Luc Liber, Ambassador of uh, Belgium to Greece. The floor is yours. Would like a Thank you, Kostas. I will not go to the um, uh, speaker's um, uh, podium, but I, I will speak from here. Many of my colleagues, my two colleagues have said already many things that I could easily repeat. I will approach in my own um, presentation, the issue from the following angle, Enagas, uh, SNAM, and so on, they are Italian, Spanish, Mediterranean companies. So in, in a way, it is normal that they are interested uh, in privatization of DESFA, potentially later privatization of PPC, and so on. But you might ask, rightfully ask, what is a northern, Northwestern European company uh, doing in Greece. For presence of Fluxis in Greece um, is linked to TAP. TAP was most probably one of the most, let's say, far, far seen uh, projects ever launched. It started from the issue of, well, a lot is. Everybody in the, in the northwest and in the center of Europe depends on Russian gas. Why not also bring other gas? And this is the genesis of, of TAP. Another producer, Azerbaijan, bringing gas to Europe, to the EU. And it uh, is a tribute to the former CEO of uh, Fluxis that he said, yeah, this should be of interest to us as well. It is in line with European policy, and it is also a good business opportunity. Now, Fluxis had very good and has very good relations with Gazprom because they are in Nord Stream, and they will also be in Nord Stream too. They also, but they also realize that you cannot put your, all your eggs in one basket. So, in my country already in the 70s, we built our first LNG terminal. The LNG that comes to Zeebrugge is not coming from, from former Soviet Union or from Russia. It comes from other parts of the world. Fluxis recently acquired a second LNG terminal in Dunkerque, the, north, the northwestern part of France. So, important, we follow the European policy, diversification of, of the origin of gas, and therefore also TAP. TAP was a very good, let's say, laboratory, because it brought together three major companies uh, in, let's say, distribution, in, in, in transport, and two major producers. Now, the three, distribute, the three uh, transportation companies found each other and had good relations, and it continued with DESFA. In DESFA, you find the three transportation companies, uh, Enagas, uh, Fluxis, and SNAM. And in the same way, we see also that these three companies, because it's always good to share risks and it's not always nice uh, and uh, safe to try to do a project by yourself. You see that they also follow each other in other parts of Europe. SNAM is also looking north and Agas is also lo looking north like Fluxis is looking south and they even begin to look outside of Europe. So for us, at the embassy, the most important thing was when Fluxis approached us, like uh, my two colleagues were also approached by their companies, is to work together and to try to present to the Greek authorities the fact that, you know, serious consortium, we understand Greek concerns, and 
a, one framework of a major privatization, there are always national concerns. We have to try to understand them and build on them. And I think in a later stage of the, of the conference, you will come to the conclusion that indeed the privatization of DESFA is most probably one of the most successful privatizations in Greece in the last years. It met a lot of objectives, as I said, on the side of the Greek authorities, legitimate concerns, and also legitimate concerns on the side of the investors. DESFA and TAP are two projects in which Fluxis is participating. Will they continue to participate in other projects? Yes, for the time being, the experience has been extremely conclusive. That's far as plans. We spoke about, some of my colleagues mentioned Northern Macedonia. Well, the interconnection of the DESFA top um, pipelines with the pipelines in Northern Macedonia, it will be realized by DESFA. This is already a decision that was taken in 2015 in the framework of the uh, confidence building measures that were at that time negotiated between Greece and the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. Most uh, other elements, gas, if for the time being, the major activity of DESFA. Uh, will it continue to be? Yes, for some foreseeable future, but we also see that DESFA, and under the guidance of its three Western shareholders and benefiting from the experience of its three uh, West European shareholders will go into other sectors as well, like the renewables, wind, gas, and others. Now, uh, one last comment. One of the fascinating things about the energy picture in the uh, East Mediterranean, Southeast Mediterranean, is that a lot of things are still unclear. And it is important that, thanks to European Union, the Commission, we not only follow leads and objectives that we want to realize in the years to come, more interconnections in Europe, both at electricity level and at gas level, but that we also, and these elements still need to be assembled, elements of a puzzle that still need to be made, is what will it look like in 10, 15 years? That we do not know yet. Explorations are still going on. Greece is launching a lot of new explorations. Cyprus, Egypt, uh, Israel. What will be the future of Libya uh, once it will stabilize? Libya also has one, is one big gas bulb. So we see that what will be the grid, if you can call it like that, the transportation, the exploitation system we will see only in the years to come. The advantage of TAP, as I said, was that we had from the very beginning a major producer with available gas and a market that was immediately ready to buy the gas. So one, in a few months' time, TAP will be finished and they will begin the, the, expo the exploratory tests to see if the, the project is technically uh, the way it should be. We, this was already decided a few years ago, and we knew at that moment who would, where the gas would come from and who would be the customers. In the East Med, a lot is still uncertain. We have new finds, and you follow that exactly the same way as I do. We have finds in the E zone of Cyprus. We have finds in the E zone of Egypt. We have a beginning of big infrastructure. We have two LNG plants in Egypt that are presently underperforming. And that can take gas, but from where? Will it come from Israel by underground pipeline? Will it come from Cyprus by underground pipeline? Or will the Egyptians say, we have enough, and so we can use it both for our internal markets and for export? So a lot of things we still need to find elements of the puzzle. We found a few, but we have not seen the complete picture yet. And it is to the tribute of the European Commission, and in that we all, all our EU countries support the Commission, that it not only deals with, its, with our own internal uh, gas and electricity market, 
but that it also stimulates us, the member states and, and our companies, to look and explore the different uh, possibilities and to see what in 10, 15, 20 years, for 50 years time, would be the most ideal situation for Europe. As my Italian colleague said in one of his speeches, we, in, in his speech, we do not only want electricity security, we do not only want uh, interconnection uh, and, let's say, a, f a fully functioning internal market, but we want everything also at the best possible prices. Thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, remarks. Uh, I would like to initiate a discussion uh, as we have uh, a plan for this session, and it, it, it is uh, apparent that you know the, the economic environment is changing, and it seems that uh, you know the um, uh, trust in the Greek economy is being restored, uh, as we can see from uh, you know at least the presence and the interest that a number of uh, European and international companies are showing, and uh, especially for the energy sector, which is at the heart of our discussions, in, in, in many different sectors, necessarily not only in gas, uh, that as we have seen, but we have discussed about renewables and Italian presence is also here. You know, uh, uh, we have uh, big uh, companies as well in uh, the renewable sector. Uh, storage, innovation is at the heart of the discussions for the energy transition, and it seems that the, uh, the Greek case as well with insularity, as it was mentioned by the minister and uh, other uh, speakers before us, uh, you know, we have a lot of islands that are still uh, burning uh, diesel and, you know, it's on this process of transition does make a lot of sense to, to look at the cleaner uh, solutions uh, or any other economical solution that is environmentally friendly, friendly at the same time. Now, I would like to uh, ask all of you a generic question in terms of, you know, if you are first of all sharing this view, and if so, what is the feedback that you are getting from the, uh, the companies and uh, the, the uh, political influence centers that you are talking to back home, uh, whether, you know, Greece is still, uh, you know, it is ready to actually receive more uh, support uh, and uh, more investments from uh, companies coming from uh, your respective countries? Um, uh, I think uh, that some Europeans, we have made the mistake of looking at, uh, in the past years, at looking at Greece almost exclusively from a budgetary uh, point of view, which is, uh, of course, a very relevant one, but uh, we have uh, um, maybe miss something which is now very, uh, comes very, uh, very clear to our eyes, the geopolitical uh, position of, of Greece, and uh, the Americans have shown it to us, other countries have shown it to us, and it's time for Europe as a whole to understand and support this role of Greece, and Greece is uh, fully fully ready to, to respond, to react. I see uh, many companies from Italy asking uh, more uh, information about Greece, and this is very positive. Um, I would say on uh, interconnections um, that uh, uh, this, this issue perhaps is one of the most, if not the most important of the European Union at this uh, present juncture. And I think it's not, um, it was not a chance that uh, Spain, uh, at a given moment, when at the beginning of the present commission, pressed so much to have a commissioner uh, on, uh, on energy, because as you may know, uh, the Iberian Peninsula is uh, an energy island. Uh, we are, or we were, almost uh, isolated from the rest of Europe. Uh, there were no interconnections, uh, very slight interconnections on electricity and gas. And this was the reason why uh, there were huge, huge uh, investments on the market in order to, uh, to try to uh, meet uh, uh, the, the demand as uh, Spain uh, was growing. So this is changing and we, we are very happy that uh, finally uh, the European Commission and the rest of the countries understand 
how important the interconnection is. I think, in my personal view, when I was uh, General Director for European Union for many years, uh, interconnections now and in the future may be what structural funds, what cohesion funds was in the past. Uh, it will be extremely important. And uh, for that reason, I praise uh, the comments by the uh, General Director of Energy of the European uh, Commission. Uh, that there are so many, so many funds uh, that uh, may be concentrating its main um, funds uh, to precisely interconnections and uh, make uh, the internal market for energy really uh, uh, working. And if interconnections is important for all of us, uh, in the case of Greece, I mean, I think it's of a paramount importance. Uh, the Minister Sasaki spoke about uh, uh, the islands, um, how they have uh, fixed uh, connections, but uh, of course, I mean, when you have uh, 100 islands uh, uh, inhabited, um, I mean, you cannot spend uh, all your uh, budget uh, in interconnections, so you have to be n very much uh, selective. Uh, what would we do with, with the rest one? I think is a, um, a very intelligent solution. And Spain is also working on this respect in, in the Canary Islands, for example in order to try make renewables, um, change uh, what diesel and uh, oil has been doing in the past, so that uh, uh, islands uh, may be self-sufficient. Uh, I hope very much that this philosophy um, uh, will be maintained in, in Greece, and in Greece can um, benefit uh, as, as, as much as uh, any, anybody else, because it needs uh, of uh, the funding uh, of the European Union on interconnections, um, which I repeat, I think is one of the most important issues of the European Union at this present juncture. Um, Costas, you also spoke about the attractivity of Greece. After the comments of my colleagues who focused on particular uh, sectors uh, or even niches, uh, let me answer you in a different way. Yes, for us also in Belgium, for our companies, Greece is back on the investment radar. It is back on the investment radar for a number of sectors where indeed over the last years one came to the conclusion that yes, Greece has things to offer. Now, an investment company, a company that wants to invest, either they look for very particular sectors because they are specialized themselves and they want to enlarge their market uh, or complement uh, their own activities or they have a regional strategy. Now for companies that have a regional strategy, it is competition. The word is competition. The word is compare who, who uh, has the best things to offer. We have an increasing internal market that we want to complete as much as possible within the EU. That means no border controls, no you, the, the place where you produce, from which you export to the others, depends not on the nice face of a minister, sorry, Minister Starkis has left. Um, it doesn't depend on the nice face of the minister. It is a purely economic calculation. Workforce prices, energy prices, uh, transportation, and so on. So for regional companies with regional uh, strategies, it is comparing countries, comparing locations. For those that have niche market strategies, yes, Greece has to be a place of interest for certain niche markets where the Greeks have undoubtedly advantages. From agro-industry, I would select for sure. Logistics, for sure, and we see it with the Costco development in Piraeus, the Saloniki development, future development of the regional ports like Cavalla, um, Igumenica, and so on. So, yes, for logistics, for agro, for renewables, for energy, and for some other very peculiar cases. Like, for example, I'll give you one example. One of our, it's an example that I always give to our companies when they come here and to ask for Chen, what are the experiences of our companies. One company, nothing to do with energy, they produce ingredients for pastry shops, for bakers, for producers of cookies and so on. Well, it is in terms of what they invest, 
in terms of revenue, our most successful investment in the, and what, if you take the money that they invested, the yearly revenues, even in the period of the crisis, they continued to grow. So everything depends on a well-targeted investment. You look for either a regional place, and there it is tough competition, or you have niche markets that are linked to a particular country, and there, yes indeed, when you target well, you can be extremely successful. And I come, I'm also ambassador in Cyprus. The Republic of Cyprus will never be able to attract an automotive plant. We know that. Uh, but, uh, but there are many other sectors uh, where Cyprus can be successful. And in the same, in the same way, Greece, a number of sectors that will not come to Greece, but a number of sectors where Greece can be extremely uh, successful. But most important thing, and I think my Italian colleague mentioned it, is a clear legal framework. <coughs> Knowing who to address, where to go, a one-stop shop to make things smooth and fast, uh, and a, a stable legal framework, a stable fiscal framework, uh, and uh, a very important element, social peace. Thank you. Uh, there was a lot of uh, discussion about the geopolitical importance that uh, you know Greece uh, has. Uh, you spoke about the pressures from um, the, the, the U.S. in terms of its uh, diplomacy here in, in the region. Uh, I was also personally uh, participating in the first uh, high-level EU-U.S. energy summit uh, with a focus on LNG in Brussels two days ago on, on Thursday. Um, and we, we have seen there that uh, there is an alignment, apparently. We see the, imp the, the, the importance of uh, you know, energy di diversification. Uh, we, as Greece, we do have a lot to offer on, on this, in this respect because of the geopolitical position of, of, of the country. But uh, in terms of uh, the embassy's role, how do you see now this importance of the energy diplomacy and what would be the role that uh, an embassy, uh, the U.S. Um, the, the ambassador in a respective country should play to, to try to foster this uh, uh, collaboration, if you wish, and promote this uh, agenda that is for the benefit of the Europeans in the end. I guess the role, as, as I see it, of uh, uh, the Italian embassy is to to say to the co to the government, of course, but to to the Italian companies that uh, the, this is a, a place where they they have to invest because uh, they will find an environment which is. Uh, close to their environment, but also because, and this is something which I address to my government, uh, it is in our interest to strengthen Greece. I understand that, um, I, I look at the American interest, political interest in Greece, and uh, I think this is very positive. Uh, I don't see many American uh, in investments. Why is it so? I don't know, maybe, but the answer I'm giving to myself is because an investment is something which is expensive, it's an effort, so you pay a lot of money to invest, and maybe uh, for a big company it's more profitable to do this somewhere else and not in tiny Greece. But this is not the case should not be the case for our com the Italian companies. Because our interest is, as, as I said, to strengthen the bilateral relations. If we, if we strengthen the bilateral relations, then we strengthen the whole of Europe. And these are the borders of Europe. This is why we do care, I, I do, we do care very much about Greece. Thank you, Kostas. Uh, I think that um, energy somehow is um, not, uh, as other sectors of the economy, 100% um, motivated by the development of the economy. Particularly when you looked at the European uh, framework where clear regulations 
a new uh, targets are set and uh, maybe stringent for all member countries. So we have uh, something in common and uh, there are expectations uh, and, uh, and regulations by, <coughs> by government uh, that um, everybody understands. Uh, and uh, the, the sector is uh, somehow developing uh, by itself. And this is basically the reason why I think in this sector, the energy sector, uh, many companies uh, remain in Greece when uh, the financial crisis erupted uh, because there was a clear view that uh, in the future there may be benefit for all. And this is actually what happened and we are very, very happy for that. Um, personally speaking, diplomatically, uh, I have to say that um, I learned a lot uh, in my short experience here in Greece uh, on, on this sector because it gave me First, the opportunity to be in close contact with uh, the Italian ambassador and uh, the Belgian ambassador. We have been speaking and uh, doing representations um, because we, our normal interlocutor is the Greek government. Uh, because they, uh, I mean, they, um, they place themselves at a very high level. Sometimes uh, they are difficult to reach by private companies, and the private companies require sometimes the small push of uh, political message uh, by the ambassadors. And uh, we do care uh, about our interests, and uh, we, we are accustomed to, to make representations uh, with, with the Greek government. And this is very positive. First of all, contact with my colleagues. Second of all, uh, contacts uh, with, the, with the Greek government. And then uh, a third aspect, which I, th I believe is, is very important, is uh, taking into account that uh, a company is mainly uh, also um, 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 do business at the local level. I think um, we have to. Uh, we may be uh, doing more contacts at a local level. I think uh, this is something I've been doing and I, I believe that I will be doing more in the future because uh, sometimes you have uh, local authorities which are uh, dragging the feet sometimes uh, to follow the, uh, the rules of the national authorities. Uh, and you need this uh, cooperation and this consultation, primary consultation between the big companies, your national companies, and the local authorities. So there, I think, is uh, uh, one field we still have, uh, I personally still have to explore. And I believe that uh, in the next few months and years, uh, we'll take this opportunity to travel around uh, in order to uh, find uh, the local uh, local problems and also engage with, with local authorities. So diplomatically, a lot of experience with my colleagues, with, lo with semi similar interests, with the government, and of course, uh, in the future, more and more with local authorities. Thank you. Thank you. Every Belgian ambassador, since my country exports 75% of what it produces, so every Belgian ambassador, his main task is economic diplomacy. We have, of course, political diplomacy, the good relations, we have the consular dimension, we have the touristic dimension, but as I said, we export 75% of what we produce. So our embassies are there mainly for economic diplomacy. And what do we do? We help our companies, we give advice to our companies, and we try to pinpoint to our companies certain weaknesses in the country, pay attention to this, pay attention to that, or stimulate them further. It is in this uh, respect important to have good positive cases. Like the Greek authorities are using an investment like DESFA internationally one day tour Europe, the United States, uh, trying to sensibilize investors in Greece, we do the same. A good investment, a successful investment, is the best visiting card. Not the nice face of a minister, not the nice face of an ambassador, but a successful investment. It is also our role, and sometimes it is a pleasant one, and sometimes it's not so pleasant, to say, well, during the phase of this investment, we witnessed this and that. It slowed down the investment or it even caused it to fail. Can one do this and that? This is the role of the European Commission and it has made a lot of 
um, recommendations to agree so as to better structure its administrations dealing with investments. And it is also the role of our embassies when we speak to the Greek authorities to tell them this, I'm sorry, but this made a nice investment fail. So this is our role, but we call it economic diplomacy. I see that in the Greek Ministry of Foreign Affairs, one begins to realize that as well. And that under the, in, the impulse of the last ministers, um, more attention is being given to promoting Greek product, promoting Greece, as a, not only as a tourist destination, but also as an investment destination and stimulating Greek exports. Because we spoke a lot about investments, the future of Greece will also, in a large part, be determined by the capacity that Greek companies have to innovate and to export. You, could, you have a nice word for it, externalization, indeed. Uh, you have a local market that is limited. You will have a number of investments in niche markets, but for the number of Greek companies, externalization will be make it or break it. And from that point of view, Greek embassies, like we try to be, Italy, Spain, uh, France, my French colleague also, uh, to help our companies, it is important that the Greek authorities really put their shoulders under the export attempts of their companies. With this, I would like to thank you very much, and please join me uh, in applauding the ambassadors for their uh, excellent discussion. Thank you deeply for the honor uh, that uh, you made to us to be here for us with us for the second time. Thank you very much.